we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Living God, as much as we love, you make us receive. I haven't even loved you, and yet I expect to receive. If there's a thief like this, may we repent and be forgiven. Why don't I have answers? When have I loved you? May we realize according to your word. The Father has prepared everything and has told us to take it, but because my heart is evil, because my eyes are darkened, I can't take them. And then I'm mistaken to thinking that you're not answering me. Today, help our eyes to be opened and to take the blessings that you prepared in front of us. We believe it will happen according to the word. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Let's say together, sheep. So if you're not receiving blessings, it's because you are poking your own eyes because you don't repent. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17, you don't love God. You please yourself, then you come to service. You do everything that pleases yourself, and then you come to worship. And if you're busy, well, then you just discard it. So you don't do the things to receive blessings, and then you say to God, why am I not receiving blessings? God, he puts the blessings in front of you, and he says to take them, but your eyes have to be opened. Can I control of my heart? No. So, but, but if God does, if our country is in difficulty, if we if we change our heart, if we eat with joy, that is medicine. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. Even if we eat well, if we're worrying, then that's like eating poison. So there's so many people being unemployed. But if we change to become a man, then it would work. So it's like as as we have more unemployed people, you know, the wives worry, the children suffer because the men are unemployed, they have nowhere to go. God is someone who changes your worries to joy. Not this joy where you're crazy and just laughing. It's when your problems are solved. That's when you're joyful. So the Bible is, is answers. Let's find Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25. So this is 25 hours a day. In other words, you don't have any time to be resting from joy. You know, if someone wants to go out as a candidate, you should come to Busan First Church and be trained for a year. Not because it's Pastor Park, that's good. It's because of the truth, coming to the Word. I would say, candidate, there are all these worries in our country. And if you have to have some debate, then... All you have to do is say to change that worry to joy, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25. So then how can people debate against the truth? They'll have nothing to say. Well, they couldn't say anything if, if they don't know the Bible. The Bible is truth. It happens exactly. So our country's worries, what will happen if you worry? Disasters. So you know that you're better than them. You should be the ones going up in those debates. So if you worry, disasters will happen. Job chapter 3, verse 24. So if they just said this as an answer, then the debate would end. But everyone's just worrying. So, you know, those all those people that listen to these debates, 
their heads are exploding because of all the worry. So tonight, how I can hear God saying that we have to change our worries to joy. There's no one as good as God. So learning this this theory, it's all fake. If theory had answers, then it would be truth. So we have to, have to ask about the truth. But what they ask about is all theory. Why is it that we ignore this this truth, which is answers? Those people who were worrying. If I worry that I'm someone who's to be ruined, it's only God who changes this. It's only the Word. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25. Let's read it together. Anxiety in a man's heart weighs it down, but a good word makes it glad. Amen. So there are a lot of people who are sick and diseased. It all comes from the anxiety in your hearts. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 14. So where does this anxiety come from? People all try to do well. But because you're not a man and you try to do well, that's why there's nothing but worry. If you find yourself, because your eyes are opened, you see the blessings that God has prepared. You see the blessings in front of you. If you see the blessings in front of you, why do you have to worry? Why does God say that we're not even as good as a beast? Because beasts, they don't worry about what they eat. They just eat what's in front of them, what they see. But people, they keep worrying. So they're worse than beasts. Psalms chapter 49 verse 20. It's because you cannot realize. If you realize and know what a man is, a beast is, then you live without worry. So faith is to be without worry. So if you have this anxiety in your heart, then it makes you have a headache. So these are all evil people. Those people who let the sins of the heart and the sins that hate to get, retain God in their heart remain. So people who don't do well, they're worrying. Let's say to the person next to you, what are you worrying about? What are you worrying about? What are you worrying about? It's so pitiful. If you worry, you will receive disasters accordingly. So whatever you worry about, it will happen. So why do that? So if you if things happen according to what you worry, then your unhappiness and disasters, who makes it? You, because you worried. So you make it and then you curse others. So that curse, you're actually cursing yourself, so you have to eat that curse. So if you curse and slander others, it's you and your children that eat it. So you say, Amen, but you know these people who are supposed to be doing big works, why don't they know the basics? In front of God, Almighty God, whatever you're worrying about, it's what your ancestors did. Those people with anxiety and a headache, if it becomes extreme, they become insane. Basically, their head explodes. So whether it be your own anxiety or your family's or the country's anxieties, it's God who says it will change this. So our country, we're in financial danger. But it's God who does everything. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25, let's read it again. Anxiety in a man's heart weighs it down, but a good word makes it glad. Amen. So if you have worries, anxieties, when does it come from your heart? When you have evil, straight away worries come out. The first evil is the problem of money, the love of the world. That's what comes out first. Second, envyings, jealousies, hatred, and that's when you worry. So if you keep storing up this worry, it increases until it explodes. And that's when you go to insanity. So before it explodes, 
because you have so much stress, that's why you go and drink and fight and all these different, all, all these different, different um, in, it manifests in different ways. Or, you know, you go off and you, you go hiking or you go to a sports event and try to, so there's no medicine that can heal this, only God's good word. So Psalms 119 verse 50, this word comforts us, comforts us and makes us live. So even a country's financial problems. So let's say there's a parent who has 10 children and the parent says, look, our family's in difficulty, so let's just have one meal each. So will all those children be able to follow that? No, even even if they're my own children, because they all have different demons inside of them, it won't happen. So God, the Lord says, only this good word will change us to joy. So if we do according to this word, whether you're being a student or an adult, the demon inside of me ruins me, my family. How can it be a patriot? So we have to cast it out, change it to the Holy Spirit, which is love. If you have love, You know, if you ate three meals a day, you will reduce to two or one or fast. Someone who has God in their heart, God moves in their hearts to do that. So if our country fasts for one month, then we receive all power. And then our economy would, would, would um, do well. So who... You know, when if God's word says to do to do according to the good word and do well, who does it? But it's the same with the country. You know, this they keep saying things that don't work. So starting from so we have to change our worries and anxieties to gladness. How? by the good word, God's word. Mark, what verse is it? Chapter 10, verse 18. So this good word is only God's word. It can only, that's the only thing that can change our worries to gladness. So if you believe in Jesus and you have worries, then you're a fake because you haven't changed it to gladness. If you have worries and anxieties, it means that you're keeping the sins of the heart and sins that hate to keep God in your heart. So you're evil. That means you have demons. You're being dragged around by demons. So you're not who you are. You have to change it to gladness. So this is so precious. So when you go out to work or your business, you know, you will receive stress. But it's not stress. It's what's come out in from your from inside you and it's like with like. But if you were cleansing yourself, you wouldn't be bothered by others. So we have to cleanse the worries and anxieties and to change it to God's gladness. That's when you become healthy and that's when you have joy. So when you smile, that's when blessings come to your family. We will do well. Tonight, to change our lives to gladness, if you have unhappiness in your family, have a look. Have you cleansed daily and gotten rid of the worries or lived with the worries? So if you have worries and anxieties later, you have headaches and then you know, if you have so many worries and anxieties, you have these headaches and they become so irritated and, you know, they start throwing things. So to change this to joy, we come daily to the Lord. You know, even though you wash your face in the morning, after work and you come home, is your face still clean? No, you have to wash it again. Otherwise, you know, things are going to grow on your face. 
So to wash and be clean, how thankful is this? There's nothing but God's word. Why does it say a good word? Because God is good. Mark chapter 10, verse 18. God is good. So why does it say God's word? So it's the word where God has come inside of me. It's not the word where you're repenting by the word of Christ. It's God's word, which means there's workings, miracles. Only that word makes us glad. Let's live correctly. Whatever suffering, torment, today let's change it to joy. If we don't change it, then my children also, because I pass it down to them, they also receive it. So who is a patriot? Those children who are joyful. If you have many children and a lot of them are smiling but two are unhappy, then the parent isn't happy. So God, he's all, because he's love, he's always joyful. But when the children are not joyful, then the father is tormented. Even if you have a hundred children, if one of them are unhappy, the parent's not happy. It's when all are happy that the parent is happy. So fa the father has made it so that we can be joyful. But why is it that we leave that and go and live with worries and anxieties? Job chapter 3 verse 24, when we're worried and we're anxious, then we go towards disasters. Why go that way when we should go towards blessings? So the way for our country and our people to live, there's no religion. God's word can change our worries to joy. Why is it that we've changed God's word to be worse than other religions? Why do you sit at a table to eat? Why do you go to the sink to wash your face? That's what a church is. But because there are so many fake churches, this is a time where the demons rule and we're not even as good as a demon religion. So God is living. If you have worries and anxieties, that's evil. We have to change it to gladness to be good. Why don't, why don't the blessings come to me? You know, there are all these people ruining, being ruined in Korea. I hear it as these owners who are evil. So I don't see people who are, who are blessed. You know, even I look at that person and they're stupid. Do you think God will give them blessings? So if your life is difficult, frustrated, no, there are so many blessings. The evil are in darkness, but if you're righteous, everywhere is blessings. So this is an opportunity for our saints to receive blessings. But when I say that you don't receive blessings, it's because you're holding on to the evil and you're worrying. You do not love God. Why do you lose the chance to receive blessings? It's so pitiful. So this is a place to change our change to blessings and joy. So, Pastor, I've done this for years. Why isn't it that I'm not doing well? Well, when have you put down the roots of joy? So when God sees, if he gives you blessings now, you'll spill them all. So he makes your eyes dark so that you can't take them. Oh, I'm not doing well? Then you're evil. To the evil, to the righteous, God says, they do well unlimitedly. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 24. Let's find Proverbs chapter 10, verse 24. The, the righteous, their desires are granted. So don't say whether you've received inheritance from your parents or not. God has prepared everything. He says to take them. It will happen according to what you want. So it will happen. You will do more well. Let's read it together. What the wicked fears will come upon him, but the desire of the righteous will be granted. Amen.
So to the evil, what they worry, what they're anxious about, what they fear will come upon them. But the righteous, their desires are granted. So if you're not doing well, you're not righteous. You're evil. It's one or the other. The evil, what they worry about, what they're anxious about comes about. Joseph, did he have money that that he was ruling over Potiphar's house as his own? So who is the owner, the one that gets to rule, rule over and use it? So God says that he'll give you the blessings of Joseph, but it doesn't work because all you do is scheme. It's only God who makes us do well. It's only this good word, God's word. So only God's word can straight away change your anxieties to gladness. When you change to gladness, you're righteous. That's when your desires are granted. If you're not righteous, then it will happen exactly according to your worries. Disasters will ha happen. So it's because you haven't repented that you don't have gladness and you keep worrying. Even now, if you run toward the Lord and, and kneel, then He will raise up the dead. That's Proverbs chapter 14, verse 27. Whatever's 100% ruined will be saved. But instead you grumble against the economy and you complain. So God, He gives you a key saying He will change your worries to gladness. Why do you keep going the way of being ruined? It's the same with the government. To say there's nothing to worry about, God's Word will change it to gladness. If we do according to God's Word, then we will live. That's the answer. If your household keeps doing well, when you worry, you won't do well, you'll be ruined. After doing four-step repentance a lot, that deacon from Saul, from Saul, so when you repented a lot, you didn't have worries. So as you repented, she was drunk in the Holy Spirit. So... So then she did well, and then she decreased in repentance. She will know herself. And then she says, oh, I'm not doing well. Why? So when you receive, you have to give thanks, and you have to humble yourself. So thanksgiving is to repent more and to go lower yourself. But you give thanks, and you stand up. And then, and then she says, oh, I'm not praying well. Well, you have to lower yourself. If you're... If you receive answers and you're thankful and joyful, then you actually have to lower yourself. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 21. If Pastor Park was a fake, I heard your witnessing. I said, wow, wow, you know. But it's after you give witnessings that you, you're ruined. Those witnessings are for you to actually go lower, but it's because you go higher. You have to lower yourself more. God wants us to lower ourselves because Jesus is at the lowest point. That's Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. So if you've lowered yourself, the lower you are, your actions, whether you come to church or anywhere, they're different. Because you, because you have a fearful heart, you're more lowered. But if you're arrogant, soon you will receive disasters. Whatever you've received is taken away because you've you've raised yourself up. It's taken away. If you've lowered yourself, then you receive more. So the pastor, knowing this, that's why. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 19. Let's find that. If I leave you to be ruined, then I'm a fake pastor. According to the word, to receive a greater blessing, to do more well. That's a pastor. So a fake church a real and a real church, you can discern.
So let's give thanks that God has given love to our church. It seems to be a disadvantage. It doesn't matter how much fake money you have, but day by day, little by little, your wealth increases. Why? Obeying this word is wealth. Let's read it together. A slave will not be instructed by words alone, for though he understands, there will be no response. Amen. So, if you go to church, you know the knowledge, but if you hear good words, then you won't listen. So, according to the Bible, you pierce them with all the curses of the Bible, like dog pig. Why do I say dog pig? So that you'll lower yourself more. If you pull on an elastic band, at the beginning it stretches well, but later, when it reaches its limits, what does it do? It doesn't want to move. So a slave doesn't want to listen to words. But once that elastic band snaps, are you tied to the band or are you free? So slaves, if you say good words, they won't listen. So it's when you're cut off by that sin you, to be free and go towards blessings. So a slave will not be instructed by good words. So when you depart from the faith, you're a dog pig. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 22. So if that band snaps, then you'll receive blessings. So that's why. I say, dog, dog. It's according to the Bible, but people don't want to hear this. But as much as you repent, that is sweeter than honey. They say amen, and they do well. So inside of God's word, why is it lately that our church lately we keep hearing this? Because we've reached our limits. So when I say, you brood of vipers, that's when it sna snaps, and then you're free. Otherwise, you'll go back to what you were. Those in the back who are tied to demons, they're sleeping. You know, but if I tell you to sleep, you won't, because those demons always do the opposite. After this service, if you try to sleep, your eyes are wide open. But when you hear God's word, you fall asleep. You always do the opposite. But if you cut this off, then then you'll do well. But those people who keep falling asleep, they hate someone, whether they hate themselves, their parents, their spouse, their friend, or a past teacher, or they had unrequited love. So they're holding on to something. But whatever they they react sensitively to, that's what they're holding on to. So just say there's a, a woman and someone that they're enemies with and they resemble that person or have a personality like that person. That's when they have this reaction. For example... If they hated someone who was a tall man, every time they see a tall man, they react negatively. So they act like that, yet they don't realize. And that's why Pastor Bart looks at that and says, ah, there's some connection there. That's Proverbs. Let's find it. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 11. How would I know except that they show me? Oh, I hate fat people. Well, that's someone who has some connection there. Because of that, that's why you keep falling asleep. Oh. Oh, I don't like people who look like that. So if you don't repent of that and you're released from that, whatever thing it is that you, you're tied up to, when you hear the word, any time you hear the word, this is what you do. So as a liar, you pretend that you're wide awake, but soon you're like this. That person, so whoever's, whoever's next to that person, you should put a frog in their mouth.
if you put a frog in someone's mouth, the frog straight away does a wee, a pee. I know because when we we used to play around like that a lot. So we used to put frogs in lunch boxes, and as soon as you open the lid, they would do a pee. So why am I saying this? Let's all live. So one or two people are doing this. You know, if you're going to yawn, just yawn. But you know, what I see from here, I wish someone would give me a camera. You know, with a zoom, and I can, you know, take a photo. You know, I'm going to take a photo of this. Let's live. We truly have to be happy, satisfied. Whatever we pray for has to come about. When our country is in difficulty and darkness, we have to be more light. So those who want a business, God will give them a big business. When the country is in difficulty and darkness, it's because the owner can't find their way. So if you have a good car, and the engine's on, ready to go. But the owner comes out and couldn't, can't find his car. They can hear the engine, but well, they actually they're deaf, and and the, the and they're blind. But this is why the businesses aren't doing well. That's when God sends someone who can see. You know, in Egypt, there were so many people who were learned, who had high positions. Yet they were all blind and deaf. So no one knew there would be seven years of abundance and seven years of famine. Only Joseph knew that's how he became the governor. This is the opportunity that's come. So how can you be falling asleep? Why are you becoming someone who can't receive blessings? You're laughing at me, but when I look at you, you know, that's why, please prepare a camera and bring it here. As soon as I speak, you fall asleep. So as soon as I, as you, I speak, I'll take a, a photo. So we have to live. Our actions, others can see, but if even men can see, then God can see even more. Let's read it together. It is by his deeds that a lad distinguishes himself, if his conduct is pure and right. Amen. So even a child, by their actions, you can see if they're pure and right, honest or evil. So you think that your conduct, conduct isn't being shown? It's all shown. And so I can see that person's not doing well because of this. So if it was one or one, I'd pick it out for you. But I can't do that here. Let's all live. So when our heart is clean and we change our anxieties to gladness, when those roots go down, then whatever happens, if we can entrust to God, so God will give unlimitedly. So, you know, I'm praying, but there's no one who can, who can handle this. You know, a big boat, you need a crew that all work well together. So if a, a, a big church is given to us, who is it that will clean? Who, who will take on the responsibilities? So if no one takes care of it, then it's just a cave. So before we ask, we have to be someone who is worthy to receive. So God has put it in front of us and tells us to take it. But why can't we take it? Because we don't have the worthiness to. So it's when our eyes are opened. That is fearing. Genesis chapter 22, verse 12 to 14. So when we fear, that's when he makes us see. Let's close our eyes quietly. 
So don't do the opposite. When I tell you to close your eyes, and then that's when you open it. Let's repent in front of the Lord. You're so frustrated, aren't you? Still, we can do well. Because the blood of Christ still cleanses and makes the evil spirits depart and changes our anxieties to gladness. Father, you love us so much that you've put the blessings in front of us and you tell us to fix our eyes and take them. But as we worry, we take the disasters. The fact that we're worrying, we're taking the disasters, but we're still holding on to the worries. I cannot find joy in my face. Today, help us to get rid of the worries and to take the blessings. Why is it that we can't lower ourselves? Why can't we go towards gladness? What am I tied up to? So this last stage is to be tied to my flesh. Help us to cut this off. Who am I grumbling against? Am I grumbling against my own destiny? If Almighty God is with me, He loves me more than my own mother. So we don't have loneliness. We don't have. We can do well in all things. Our country in difficulty, that's what the warriors say. We will do more well. It's even if we never met our parents, even if we sold our body and, and were a prostitute, even if we fell again, as long as we repent, we can still do again. You don't ask about our past. May we receive freedom and only receive blessings. We will surely do well. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Let's pray where we forgive everything. Whatever we've worried, whatever we've grumbled about, what we've been saddened about, and wanted to take revenge. If we feel nauseous and want to vomit, vomit it up. Then all the diseases inside of us will be healed. Just vomit it all up and confess and be cleansed and receive blessings and happiness and satisfaction and the blessings of doing more well.